good morning uh, so today uh, uh, we are going to have an another interesting lecture on uh, uh, handling characteristic of a vehicle how can we compare the handling characteristic of the vehicle what are the uh, different uh, uh, tests that are conducted on the test track in order to uh, rank the handling characteristic of the vehicle so uh, means uh, you have many uh, different vehicles and you can uh, um, find out uh, their handling characteristics so for that uh, uh, essentially you require uh, two approaches one can be an analytical approach another can be uh, an experimental approach so today we are going to uh, look at both of them and uh, we are going to however we are going to start from where we left from the last class right so let me just uh, quickly share my board and see what we were doing in the last class and continue with the today's lecture so in the last class we were uh, uh, just uh, uh, looking at the governing equation for a lateral dynamic study so there are three equations 1 2 3 as shown in this uh, board now on 25th lecture we started with that and we have understood very well that equation 2 and 3 are independent of equation 1 when the forward speed is constant when this forward speed is constant right you have uh, equation 2 and 3 independent of equation 1 and uh, uh, in equation 1 the first term m u dot is zero you have product of r and v so r and v however can be obtained from equation 2 and 3 and the equation 1 is depend on equation 2 and 3 since 2 uh, and 3 are independent equations that does not require uh, first equation accounted uh, whenever we look at uh, uh, steady state Uh, cornering or uh, cornering with the constant uh, velocity so that is the reason why we take only the two and three equations are the governing equation for bicycle model and we work out right and you see this uh, equation 2 and 3 are uh, uh, the coupled equation because you have uh, these equation 2 and 3 uh, uh, in a differential equation form uh, uh, you have converted into a convenient form Uh, in terms of uh, equation one, given by equation one and equation two, so this is equation two. What we had, so one is of v dot, which is lateral velocity. Another one is of r dot, which is yaw velocity rate. This is the lateral velocity rate. So these are uh, uh, first order equation because there is only one derivative of this v and r are there, where v is lateral velocity. r is yaw velocity that you know so you have two first order equations to describe your two degree freedom bicycle model or yaw plane model that is right and uh, this is that uh, uh, convenient uh, uh, representation of uh, uh, the form of representation of our governing equation what is called the state space equation in that the a matrix is very important which is called the state matrix where q is called the state variables which are our uh, degrees of freedom and uh, b is what is input matrix and uh, this is uh, quite useful is because uh, you see that any time this vehicle model can be considered to be a control system model right so when you represent a control system model there can be many inputs different inputs that can go into the control system and you will get an output so if your vehicle ha handling characteristic can be considered to be a control system model the steering input uh, is one of the input that goes into the system and you get an interesting parameters or responses like yaw velocity response lateral acceleration response or uh, this uh, lateral velocity response and so on so these responses uh, for the given input is what is defining uh, what is called as transfer function so the transfer functions are basically to characterize any physical system so how do you get this transfer function right if you look at control system textbook uh, for mechanical uh, systems you will see the transfer function is very much essential right and this uh, transfer function can also be called as frequency response function right 
or this transfer function can also be called or can also be looked at as a steady state gains. So we are going to see what are those uh, uh, and how can they be obtained. So to obtain that, uh, this uh, governing equation in state space form represented gives you a matrix called state matrix and uh, uh, that state matrix is quite useful to find out uh, this transfer function, right? So that's what we are going to see essentially here. And in the last class, we also have looked at what is this characteristic equation. So characteristic equation is something that you get your characteristic polynomial given by this equation four on left hand side and you equate that to zero is what is characteristic equation. So the roots of the characteristic equations are required to talk on the stability of the vehicle. So that is uh, uh, on one side. Let us see that uh, uh, separately uh, stability analysis of your vehicle in your plane. But however, characteristic of the vehicle to study, uh, we require this characteristic polynomial. So this characteristic polynomial would be taken in the denominator of your transfer function. Right? That's what you will see that uh, uh, in today's lecture. Uh, we will see them in a uh, very detailed uh, manner and their physical interpretation. And then we look at uh, uh, what are the different handling tests are conducted. Right? So that's essentially what is the objective of today's uh, class. <coughs> so let me just to go and start today's class. So this is lecture number. Twenty seven and today's date is nine four twenty twenty one. And today you are going to look at essentially vehicle transfer functions for handling. So you can call this as transfer function or frequency response functions or we are also going to look at what do you mean by steady state gain. They are not, uh, uh, they are uh, the different context that you get. You require transfer function in control system design. You require frequency response function in case of you want to uh, look at the magnitude of uh, 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 your uh, uh, response and what is the phase information and so on to get, you require frequency response function. So this is something that you look at in frequency domain. This is something that you look at in complex plane domain. Plane. So complex plane is uh, uh, represented by Laplace uh, uh, variable S, yes. right? So the roots of the characteristic uh, polynomial that we have seen, uh, uh, characteristic equation that we have seen, can be uh, uh, of uh, real roots or complex roots or complex conjugate roots and so on, right? So that is what is S. S is what is Laplace variable. So you would see that Laplace transform is a useful uh, method of converting differential equation into an algebraic equation, especially they are converted into a polynomial. So the polynomial is expressed in a variable called a Laplace variable S. Yes. So that is how your characteristic polynomial is expressed in terms of S yes that we have done in the last class. And what is frequency response function? If you substitute S yes, by J times Omega. What is J times Omega? Omega is what is its uh, uh, frequency uh, and J is what is a complex number. So uh, J squared is minus one. Uh, uh, see J is uh, a complex number. So how do you define J is like uh, in mathematics book you'll see either it is represented by I. In control system book you see J is a complex number that's given by uh, root of uh, minus one. Right, so j square is going to be minus 1 uh, into minus 1 plus 1. So j cube is going to be 
see uh, uh, how do you define your uh, uh, complex number uh, j is minus 1 root of minus 1 so that's what is you write it as i so uh, our j j square is uh, uh, root minus 1 into root minus 1 so it's minus 1 and uh, this is minus j and this is plus 1 j power 4 right so you you know how uh, j is defined so if i substitute in my transfer function yes as j omega what does that i get uh, uh, is what is called a frequency response function so it is uh, looked at in a frequency domain and what are steady state gain steady state gains are the response uh, uh, of your uh, vehicle for the given steering input during steady state motion. So during steady state motion, your response, whatever that you get, like you get your yaw velocity response for the given steering input is what is steady state gain. So if I have this R by delta as function of S, yes, delta as function of S, yes, like this, then it is a transfer function. So in this, if I substitute S is equal to J omega, whatever I get is what is frequency response function. If R by delta, where it will be represented as output by input, so this output is function of S. So this would be a polynomial, this would be a polynomial. So the order of this polynomial, numerator and denominator, if you look at that can be equal or uh, the numerator polynomial is less than the order of uh, denominator polynomial, right? So in this, So if this is uh, yaw velocity, then I get yaw steady state gain, g of yaw, right? If I have my lateral acceleration, a y by g in terms of g, if I write for a given delta and s tends to zero, then whatever I get is lateral acceleration gain. So what, why S tends to zero I put is because whenever you are having any mechanical system and that system is given some input and the response uh, can, uh, according to the given input would reach at time tends to infinity. So at time tends to infinity in time domain is equivalent to S tends to zero in uh, complex domain. And uh, when you put the S tends to zero, then steady state right and these gains are quite useful for uh, comparison of your vehicle so i can also have an another interesting gain is what is called a curvature gain as s tends to zero is what is my curvature gain curvature gain so these three gains are what we were going to look at uh, today uh, so, you know, how can you obtain the transfer function and from the transfer function, how can you get steady state gain is what I'm going to explain. So let us take our pure cornering study and then impose the condition for steady state gain and let's get our uh, uh, steady state gain expressions. One can also straight away go to steady state equation you can do, but today's approach I'm doing it so that uh, one can also get what is the transfer function as you are doing your uh, digital assignment this would be quite useful for you to uh, have a control system design right so you, you need to know how can you represent your transfer function and uh, from the transfer function how can you get your frequency response function or if you are interested in to get the steady state gain what is that you should do it uh, uh, so that you get your the gain values yeah excuse me sir. yeah uh, yes sir. actually two things i want to mention uh, yeah. the first thing was Sometimes the uh, voice gets cut off, so it's hard to like keep track of what you're saying. So if Which you could um, at least like so write a little clearly so that we can write it down so that later we can refer to it maybe uh, and um, why you're not able to follow my writing? 
uh yes sir actually what happens is uh, when you're talking sir there's a there's a uh, like at least like a 3 or 4 second lag between what is being written and what you're saying oh 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 so even while like pointing at diagrams it's it sometimes it gets a little hard to understand so if you could at least like uh, so write a little properly it will be like uh, easier to understand sir like what who is uh, this who is asking sorry sir who is this asking uh, just because ethan yes Dinesh. sir okay ethan i'll take care see what's happening then i should talk very slowly and write very slowly uh, always yes, when i teach my class i am running short of time there are a lot of content and that has to be uh, said no so in my mind you know it is always kind of uh, uh, running after things that is why what's happening i speak faster than a writer that's happening sometimes yes, anyhow uh, i i'll just sir, go a bit delay a uh, bit uh, slow so that uh, sir, my okay. sir it's okay if you go fast but sir if you could like write a little clearly it will be like a little helpful because so we can go over it on what is that you understand in this uh, uh, you tell me clearly you are asking what is not uh, you are not following in my writing in this slide so like the on the left hand side the second equation that you have written so i'm not sure what the bottom left term is because i have like been able to follow it got cut off in but middle what, here a y by g by delta you are not able to follow okay yeah so like the delta i was i'm not sure because i wasn't what is delta uh, by the way what is delta so far we have it, been studying in our course <clears throat> so it's the the one second i wrote it down the the wheel plane angle with the uh, central it's not the wheel plane angle it is steer angle right steer uh, angle the, yeah steer yeah. angle delta is steer angle right and uh, you can have your steering wheel angle so steering wheel angle would be different So steering wheel angle, how do you get? You have to have a steering ratio. So you have to multiply your steer angle with the steering steer uh, gear ratio, so that you will have steer wheel angle. So what is that on the driver hand steering wheel? Is that you rotate that angle? That same angle would be reduced by your steer reduction ratio that comes on the wheel. So wheel plane. tilt about vertical axis is what is steer angle right so that is what is that an input for the vehicle in a control system design so if you have your uh, transfer function of your vehicle and you give this input and what is the response that you get would define you the transfer function so output by input is what is your transfer function where output has to be expressed in terms of s as well as input also to be expressed in terms of s right is then you are following yes sir yeah so i i will try to write clearly because you know i understand that sometimes you don't follow my writing i have to be very slow in doing it i'll do it yeah so uh, today's class essentially we are going to look at two things uh, one is how are these uh, steady state gains uh, three equations that can be obtained and uh, the second thing what are the different handling test uh, in the uh, test track uh, they are called skid pads so are conducted in order to uh, have a quant quantification of your vehicle handling uh, characteristic of different vehicles so that is that uh, uh, objective of today's lecture and let me go to <coughs> explaining you Uh, this so the steady state gains how can you get is what uh, in the last class we have seen by uh, uh, this so q dot equals a into q plus b into delta right so this is our governing equation in state space form that we have seen so in this if i represent q by Uh, so you know the skew is state variable they are essentially in our model v lateral velocity and yaw velocity and let me take that into e raised to st is my trial function if i consider if i substitute that in this i would be able to have uh, my equation one written now would become si where s is laplace variable minus a into q 
and that's equal to b into delta b. So if you look at this, say si minus a is what is 2 by 2 matrix and q is what is 2 by 1 matrix here uh, vector and b is here 2 by 1 vector. Right? So this is in the form of c q equals b. c q equals b. So that is what is uh, uh, we call it as uh, the linear equations, correct? So they are going to be two set of linear algebraic equations. So this equation one, which is of uh, differential equation of order one, is converted into two uh, linear set of equation. When I substitute this Q is equal to V R vector E raised to ST, right? That's equal to B delta. So this is your linear algebraic equation. This is a set of linear algebraic equation. Linear algebraic equation. <coughs> right? Uh, if you look at in mathematical textbook, this delta can also be taken inside. Delta is what is the input, right? And this Q here uh, is expressed in X. So it's basically an algebraic equation. There is no differential term in this. So if we have like that, it is very easy uh, uh, to represent an e every individual variable. There are two state variables, V and R. So these two state variables can be expressed by a ratio of two determinants, right? So, for example, if I take my uh, first variable uh, V and this V is one of the variable and delta is what is an input, I take that down on this side down. So, V by delta is what is the variable can be now expressed as a ratio of two determinants. So, in this, first one would be B1. 1 b 2 1 so that's going to be c alpha f and a c alpha f and you would have here your second term is what is uh, si minus a term so that's going to be a c alpha f minus minus b c alpha r by u plus mu, plus mu, right? Plus mu. And this term, uh, which is A22 term, that's going to be I is at, is at, yes, plus A squared C alpha F minus b squared c alpha r by a and you would have a denominator polynomial is si minus a determinant so si minus a determinant already you had what is the si minus a determinant so how would you get you would have s square term plus some s term plus some constant term right some constant term. So this is what we had. So that's there here down. So if you do that and uh, substitute that. So uh, if you start, what is this column called? It is a forcing column. So this B uh, vector is uh, replacing uh, the first column of my SI minus A. That is what is my numerator determinant. And the denominator determinant is SI minus A, which we have derived in the last class, if you look at. Uh, and that polynomial would be there in the denominator. So in this, if I substitute, uh, yes tends to zero. So when I work out here, you see there is S term here, right? So I would have my, uh, here only S is there. So I would have first order uh, linear equation in denominator as function of S, whereas in denominator, I will have these equations. And I put S tends to zero, uh, uh, the terms which are not having uh, yes would disappear. I am not going to work out. I leave it to you as a homework or you would work out 
and you would deduce this expression as like this. This is a homework you have to work out. Maybe you will be asked in the examination. So LB into C alpha R minus M A U square into U divided by L squared C alpha R into 1 plus K3 U square. So this is what is uh, your equation. Two. Right. So this is what is uh, uh, your steady state gain, and that steady state gain is what is called uh, lateral velocity gain. So this is lateral velocity gain. So you require this lateral velocity gain, uh, especially to get uh, 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 your uh, lateral acceleration gain. You will see that uh, you would substitute. Otherwise, we uh, normally uh, v by delta is not that preferred in experiments. As the measurement of V is uh, uh, not so easy here, right? Yeah, we'll see that. And now uh, the second variable can be represented because we have this and using Cramer rule. This is what is called a Cramer rule. So by Cramer's rule, if we have a set of linear algebraic equation, an individual variable uh, can be expressed as the ratio of two determinants. So that is what we applied and then we are writing first uh, variable v and uh, delta is of course your input uh, that's constant that I take it here along with it on the other side. So this become v by delta. Similarly now I can have r by delta which is yaw velocity gain. This is what is called yaw velocity gain. And uh, in this, uh, so S tends to zero, I would get my answer. So what would be the change here? Uh, denominator polynomial as it is, SI minus A, which is a quadratic equation in S. And numerator polynomial would have now this SI minus A, second column replaced by the forcing column, that is B vector. So you would have your first column without any change as it is, that is C alpha F plus C alpha R by uh, a, sorry, by U, this is the first element and uh, the second element here is A C alpha F minus B C alpha R by U, by U. And uh, here you'll have your forcing function of a forcing column that is C alpha F and A C alpha F. So when I work out this, I would have uh, here in denominator, I'll have a quadratic polynomial. In numerator, I would have a constant term. So that is going to be uh, U by, if you work out this, it is going to be U by L into 1 plus K3 U square. That's my third equation. So look at here, you have, you have your velocity gain obtained from this uh, Kramer rule, this expression. So when you do not put S tends to zero, whatever this you have is what is called a transfer function. In the transfer function, when you put S tends to zero, you have your steady state gain. So the steady state gain can also be obtained from the fundamental equation that we derived for steady state motion. What was that equation? That was delta F equals, delta F equals L by R plus K U S into U squared by G into R. Right, this was the equation that we had. This was the equation that we had. Right, so R by delta is what I wanted. So what does R? So you had in steady state cornering a relation between small r into turning radius is what is forward speed u. You have studied that. So if I take this r by delta f, 
for steady state gain if i have to get state away so in steady state uh, this r can be replaced by u by r so u by r into delta f so i can just substitute u by r into delta f is this so if i have here that substitute r into l by r plus k u s into u squared by g r so i would get my equation i get my equation this r goes inside so u by l plus k u s this r r goes out so what you get is k is u squared by g u squared by g u squared by g Uh, so is this is that equation u l into see i just want to say the same so i want to have it in this form so l if i take out uh, so this u by l if i take it out it's 1 plus uh, k u s into u squared by l g u squared by l g So now, what does this uh, equation three? And if we compare with that, I have my k three here is same as k u s by l g. That's the relationship between this. Where k three is what is called the stability factor, k u s what is called the understeer gradient. So this understeer gradient divided by l g is what is k three. You can prove this, right? So you can otherwise also uh, have it like this. U by L into one plus K S U squared by L G can also be uh, uh, taken as it is. You are uh, understeer as you are uh, under uh, as you are yaw velocity uh, again. Just a minute. Just confirm that. Yeah. So you can also have it uh, uh, like this. with this right so this expression is what you will see in wong textbook and this expression you will see in jasser and any uh, research paper you will see and especially when stability analysis and you are talking on this k3 is used so this k3 is what is called stability factor we'll see that later stability factor so this stability factor was there in our last lecture if you look at uh, uh, in the last lecture uh, so the way in the last lecture we just have uh, got the stability factor see here k3 so this k3 uh, on the one side and the other side if i take i can just to prove that uh, what is the relationship between k3 and k yes is always students do ask why sometimes use k3 sometimes k yes what is the relationship so that you can see here so k3 is stability factor m into b c alpha r minus a c alpha f by l squared c alpha f c alpha r and that was uh, uh, equal uh, uh, if i have to have my relationship it is k u s into uh, what does that is saw in the uh, previous one uh, by lg right k3 kes by lg so you can have that kes uh, by lg right so how did you uh, get that is simple here so you can prove this so Uh, how do you prove that as uh, in this way? So if I remove this, what is KUS? Uh, by the way, we have derived earlier. It is W F by C alpha F minus W R by C alpha R by L G. So if I take here LCM, it is going to be 
denominator L G C alpha F C alpha R and uh, that's going to be W F C alpha R minus W R C alpha F. So what does W F? WF is WF is W. So you know WF is print taxil load. That's going to be uh, uh, W B by L. W R is W A by L. So if I substitute that here, uh, W W uh, can be written as M G, right? So mg a by l is equal to mg b by l. So if I substitute that here, I would have uh, uh, mg b c alpha r minus mg a c alpha f by L squared G C alpha F C alpha R. So now you see this G G goes up, and also I have uh, here this L. So when I substitute M G by L here, and here also L, so that L comes uh, in denominator. So that's going to be M B C alpha R minus A C alpha F by LC alpha FC alpha R is what is proved now. So this is the relationship. So uh, K3 uh, is what is called the stability factor and that is uh, related to our KUS already what we had um, by this relationship. So remember this and uh, uh, that's what you have it here. So if I have to express in terms of my stability factor, this is my steady state. Uh, gain for yaw velocity gain and uh, uh, if I have to express in terms of KES then uh, this expression so let's call this is 3A and 3B any one can be taken 3B equation 3B so it is in terms of KES so remember that uh, you, you should not get confused looking at different textbooks right so this expression 3B you would witness that in Wong textbook so this is uh, yaw uh, velocity gain so now, what is the physical meaning of yaw velocity gain? So what does that we understand by yaw velocity gain? So look at now, uh, already we had uh, earlier, uh, um, when we looked at uh, steady state cornering alone, as function of speed, what is the steering angle requirement that you have seen? So what is the governing equation for your steady state uh, cornering? that is given by this equation this is the governing equation so see here this is function of velocity forward velocity if i take that and if i do and i know when ke is zero i would have it is simply l by r and that is uh, neutral steered vehicle condition and this value is l by r the l is 3 meter r is 30 meters Accordingly, you have taken this as 0.1 uh, radians, right? The same, uh, what does uh, require, uh, what you had got, uh, uh, if uh, KES is positive in this expression, you had your velocity uh, goes like this. So when this value happens to be 2R, 2L, 2L by R, 2L by R, this is L, 2L by R, what you had is V characteristic speed. And uh, similarly, when uh, KU has this negative value, you see that it is uh, keep uh, uh, decreasing. At one point of time, the steering angle is zero. When KES is negative, that's uh, uh, that's going to be uh, L by R minus this. So uh, uh, steering angle requirement becomes zero. So this velocity corresponding is what is critical velocity that you have said. So this is what you have seen already in a steady state uh, uh, motion 
uh, what is the requirement of steering angle as function of speed and that was used for uh, uh, categorizing your vehicle tendencies based on your KES. That's one side. But now what we had is not only steering angle. You had uh, uh, in uh, uh, as a transfer function. So advantage of having steady state gain is again looking at uh, the behavior of your vehicle and uh, say vehicle tendencies. So now I'm going to draw uh, this yaw velocity gain. Yaw velocity gain. So this yaw velocity gain is given by what? Uh, uh, either by 3B equation or 3A equation. So if I take now on my vertical axis, instead of steering angle here, I take here uh, R by delta. See, why do I uh, draw both uh, here? Because in examination when uh, Yaw velocity gain as function of speed when it is asked. Students were drawing this diagram and explaining. So you should understand uh, this graph on my right hand side is uh, representing steady state motion and simply what is the steering angle requirement uh, as function of speed. Whereas here you are having a matrix to categorize your vehicle handling characteristics. So for that you have to take here the speed as function of speed, yaw velocity gain. So now what will happen to yaw velocity gain? So look at here now, uh, you have your uh, uh, this. So you, uh, in the numerator it is there, as well as in denominator it is there. If vehicle happens to be uh, uh, neutral steer tendency vehicle, that means what uh, you have your KES, understeer gradient value zero, uh, that means uh, uh, front tire compliance and rear tire compliance are same or you can say the slip angle developed in front axle wheels and rear axle wheels are the same then you have your vehicle uh, said to be neutral steer vehicle so KES becomes zero so your steady state gain is simply uh, going to be u by l so u by l so uh, what do you mean by that u by l means uh, u is now function uh, variable so it is going to vary linearly. So you would have uh, your variation here for a steady state gain as the so that's going to be u by l, right? So on this represent your neutral steer vehicle, neutral steer tendency of the vehicle. <clears throat> now, if KUS happens to be positive, what would happen? If KES happens to be positive, what would happen? So this is going to be increasing. KES is positive, there is value. So you would have your understeer, uh, um, uh, sorry, your uh, yaw velocity gain would gradually increase, right? It would be uh, increasing and it would attain on maximum value. After that, it will again decrease like this. So this maximum value corresponding the speed is what is called V characteristics. So you have to understand uh, with respect to this diagram on my right hand, what is characteristic speed? When the steering angle required is double that of uh, what is the steering angle required for neutral steer uh, tendency. And the corresponding speed is what is you said. Supposing you are asked to explain um, what is characteristic speed in explained through yaw velocity gain that you should say that uh, yaw velocity gain when it is going to be maximum and that speed is what is correspondingly equal to called the characteristic speed right so understand this so when this is maximum at that point uh, you would have uh, your characteristic speed Right, and uh, if KES happens to be negative, you know that uh, so oversteer tendency vehicle would have this, this negative because of uh, rear axle wheel slip angle is greater than that of front axle wheel, and uh, you would have your uh, yaw velocity gain varying in this fashion, and it is going to be uh, increases very steeply like this. Why is it so? So you look at that uh, when KES is negative. I have here L minus of quantity as V 
is increases right at uh, uh, very high uh, uh, as v increases there is a point when this denominator is going to be zero when denominator is going to be zero you would have uh, yaw velocity gain is infinity so it reaches infinity asymptotically so that speed is what is corresponding to critical speed what you have seen critical speed so this is how you could say for a vehicle chosen you can consider in case you want to work out kus understeer behavior is positive value 0.0175 radians and uh, it's in you need to you should know radians because wf by c alpha f so wf is in newton c alpha is in newton per slip angle in radians so you get in radians so this is positive value and here for oversteer vehicle uh, under uh, kes value is uh, uh, minus 0.035 so this is the chosen vehicle uh, 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 with this values uh, these plots can be done as you vary the speeds right yeah so this is uh, uh, your velocity gain so if we have uh, now your digital assignment uh, three vehicles of the same um, brand uh, what would be your velocity gain for hatchback vehicles sedan class or suvs you can uh, find them and then you can characterize uh, uh, and predict what are the critical speeds and uh, and your characteristic speeds so for that purpose you can use this very well right so this is your velocity gain so similarly you can also get uh, lateral acceleration gain so i am not uh, going into uh, deriving the transfer function and so on so i just have explained you here for these two v by delta and r by delta so s tends to uh, uh, zero you would have steady state gain only i have put if you do not put s tends to zero you have your uh, numerator and denominator polynomial that is your transfer function so please derive them and look at how are they looking uh, how are they appearing what are those equations right and now uh, the other important gain is what is called acceleration gain acceleration gain lateral acceleration gain so that would be v squared by r into g so gr so this is your lateral acceleration so what is this lateral acceleration normalized by g for a given steering input and s tends to zero is what is going to give you right this is my transfer function in that s tends to zero if i put i would have my uh, uh, gain so that value is going to be uh, u squared by l into 1 plus k3 u squared or this can be u square by in terms of uh, what we had uh, um, uh, written earlier right uh, in terms of kus instead of k3 then it is u squared by l plus uh, ku s into u squared by r u squared by r right so see that in the previous case so what we had for yaw velocity gain is this u by l into kus by u squared by g so now you have here uh, with this this So what is that this is going to be? It's not R, I'm sorry, it's not R um, by um, this U squared by GL. Uh, you can derive KES into U squared. This is not that. is into u square so how that comes so you can also see that uh, um, from the uh, other relationship how 
uh, see, uh, you can have it like this. You can have it like this. Is paid by one plus K3. Just uh, let me just check this. Yeah, K3 U squared or uh, U squared by GL into GL into Yeah, these expressions are correct. So this is your uh, equation number. What we had in the previous this three B. So let us call this is equation four. So this equation for today's class is for uh, acceleration, lateral acceleration gain, lateral acceleration gain. Uh, you can also say that it's just multiplied with whatever that I had is just multiplied with u of what is that we had it here, right? Is it so? Is this expression is multiplied by u? Do you get? Yes, right. So this expression is just multiplied by u. That you can say that is from this steady state kinematic relation. What is that? R into R is what is u. So R is equal to u by R. So I had a, uh, here equation 3b R by delta is given by u by l plus k u s by g into u square right so this is what uh, i got for l by uh, r by delta so if i replace that by u by r here so my uh, U by R. R is equal to U by R, correct. So uh, look at uh, this gain G lateral acceleration gain would be uh, this. So in that, uh, which is U squared by R lateral acceleration in terms of G is divided by G by delta. So in this, if I have uh, u by r is r, then it's going to be what? r u by g into delta. So r by g is what I have, r by uh, u, or r by delta is what we had here. So I have to just multiply this by uh, u by g, right? So that's going to be u by l plus k u s by g is that multiply this by multiply this by u by g. So what is that I have is u squared by l g plus k u s u square k s u square. So that's our equation for. So these all are simple relations and. Uh, uh, why uh, I had to write this all? If you miss one term, what you calculate or the all meaning will be different. So uh, we have to uh, very carefully do that. So now, what is the advantage of having uh, lateral acceleration gain? So if you look at uh, this, uh, uh, yaw velocity gain and lateral acceleration gain are two important gains. So one is preferred at uh, um, higher frequencies. If you look at uh, uh, this lateral acceleration gain at high frequencies become constant. And uh, yaw velocity gain uh, would become zero at uh, high frequencies. 
So whenever you are having high speeds, uh, it is uh, preferred that you have a measurement of lateral acceleration. When we are going to look at steady state handling test, you see that we measure uh, lateral acceleration of your vehicle and that would be uh, required because uh, this lateral acceleration gain at high frequencies, which are corresponding high speeds, uh, would be constant. Whereas yaw velocity gain is zero at high frequencies, right? So uh, that is the uh, main difference for between yaw velocity gain and lateral acceleration gain. So now on another gain is there. Before that, let us look at uh, what would be the variation of this gain as function of speed. So I have speed and I have uh, uh, this lateral acceleration gain. So that is a y by g by delta. So what is a y? Don't get uh, uh, worried. So u squared by r. These all are simple relations. So here I put a y <coughs> is nothing but u squared by r. So u squared by g r is what is a y by g where a y by g is lateral acceleration in terms of g's for the given steering input under steady state motion is what is called <coughs> steady state gain and this steady state gain uh, would be now uh, will be like this. So I said that at high frequencies this is going to be zero uh, sorry it's going to be constant that is very very evident from this expression from this expression right so let's first look at uh, ke is zero what would happen ke is zero that is corresponding to neutral steer tendency see it is not that uh, one vehicle is uh, 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 given with your uh, tire uh, cornering stiffness and <coughs> uh, wf and wr in steady state and you have that value is fixed so that vehicle is always under steer you cannot say and that is only in steady state motion. But in reality, if you look at the operating condition of your vehicle is different. Though you are driving with the constant forward speed, you would uh, that the speed can fluctuate. And uh, you, it is not that you need to only drive with the constant speed. So you may also gradually increase the speed or suddenly you will apply brake in cornering and so on. So the operating conditions do come and influence. So in such cases, uh, you, you have to you have to see that uh, 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 for the same vehicle, you can have uh, the vehicle tendency can be of neutral steer tendency or understeer tendency or oversteer tendency. Uh, it depends upon your lateral acceleration. So at low lateral acceleration, smaller lateral acceleration, generally your vehicle would behave as an understeer vehicle. At a high lateral acceleration, the same vehicle can behave to be as an overstate vehicle. So remember the statement I would explain you uh, to uh, graph later, right? So now look at uh, this. Uh, uh, when K is zero, what is my when K U S is zero? What is my uh, uh, gain? Lateral acceleration gain that's going to be U squared by L G. Right. So as function of speed, forward speed, u, if I increase this, uh, it is going to vary uh, in a quadratic manner. See, this is u square. So it's not linear. So I would have my variation of my uh, lateral acceleration gain as a curve like this it goes. So that's my neutral steer condition when KUS is zero as V increases like this. So now what would happen to uh, KES to be positive? When KES is positive, uh, it is uh, uh, it is uh, an under, uh, understeer behavior of the vehicle. So you require more steering angle uh, as you increase the speed, right? Uh, so, uh, so what would happen here? Uh, in this case, uh, for the lateral acceleration, when KES is positive, uh, you would have that value uh, is increases and it would reach asymptotically asymptotically uh, to this because what will happen uh, since there is a u square term uh, associated with this product KUS at very high speeds uh, what will happen is uh, L into G value compared to that is negligible 
so you would have uh, uh, that's reaching asymptotically to a constant value one by kvs at very high speeds high speeds this denominator value uh, if we compare it to lg this term is going to be more so it's going to be u squared is going to goes off it reaches to a constant value 1 by kvs by kus so it will approach asymptotically asymptotically so what will happen here the variation you would see that it is going uh, it is increases but uh, uh, it is going to reach that and asymptotically and this effect is under steer effect where kus for this chosen uh, example vehicle is equal to 0.0175 variance right so if you look at on the other hand when kus is negative that's referring to oversteer vehicle so there is a point when you would have uh, uh, since this term is negative this product would going to happen quickly uh, and then lg uh, minus of equal same value so it's become denominator become zero so your lateral acceleration gain is going to be infinity so that can be realized uh, before like you go in this uh, uh, it, it will be here it goes like this so that would become infinity and that corresponding speed here is what is v critical what we say so this is the worst here the condition Vehicle. Where here KUS value of the chosen vehicle is minus 0.035 radians. Right. So another important gain. So if you have next class, you can uh, leave. I would just to finish this, and then uh, I will complete this, and then next class we will look at what are handling test. Right. Uh, which I wanted to say that uh, somehow it is delayed. Uh, let me just take another five minutes and stop the lecture. Anybody of you have a class you can proceed. So the next important uh, um, steady state gain is what is called the curvature gain. So look at this curvature gain. So what is uh, curvature? It is reciprocal of turning radius is what is curvature. So uh, your curvature gain will be uh, 1 by r curvature for the given steering well and that would be again uh, can be obtained like this so with the kinematic relation itself so r into r is what is u so what do i require is 1 by r so r by u is what is 1 by r so equation 3b if i divide by so equation 3b if i divide by u i would get this so what was my equation 3b it is u divided by l plus kus by g u square right so you had already uh, this what is that r by delta so r by delta is u by l plus uh, u squared by KUS, KUS, U square by G. So now uh, I require 1 by R, that is R by U. So that's equal to R by U delta. So that's going to be 1 by L plus QUS. u square by g so this is my equation 5 so curvature gain is this curvature gain is this so here if you see it is very interesting because this curvature is what is physical meaning you know that uh, curvature increase means it is uh, radius uh, decreases curvature decreases means it is radius increases because curvature is 1 by r reciprocal. So
so increase in turning radius corresponds to reduction in curvature decrease in turning radius corresponds to increase in curvature so yeah remember that point so if we have understood that now let us look at what would be the variation of uh, 1 by r by delta as function of uh, forward speed u when kes is zero that's going to be simply 1 by l right it is just going to be reciprocal of wheel base look at your curvature gain is constant and it is dictated by reciprocal of wheel base for a neutral steer tendency of the vehicle so that's going to be uh, very uh, that's going to be constant that's going to be constant 1 by l right that's going to be 1 by l so i would have that uh, somewhere here and this is neutral steer tendency uh, where this value is 1 by l so the gain value curvature gain value is simply 1 by wheel base for a neutral steer tendency of the vehicle so what would happen uh, for an understeered uh, vehicle uh, tendency kes is positive when kes is positive here so this value uh, uh, is going to be increases as an in a function of uh, speed as speed increases uh, there is positive value so the denominator value become more and uh, your uh, uh, curvature gain decreases so your curvature gain decreases so it will be like this so it is not straight line it will be a curvature like this so this is what is going to be for an understeer effect if kes is negative obviously uh, quickly that is going to have a, a denominator zero because l minus kes by g into u square so you will have a, a denominator value zero at a particular speed and that is going to be uh, corresponding to critical speed so you were uh, uh, velocity gain uh, sorry curvature gain would uh, increase like this for an over steer vehicle and uh, that would approach infinity value and the corresponding speed is u critical u critical speed <clears throat> right so here it is oversteer tendency so what do you mean by this uh, curvature see here curvature gain is increases steeply that means what uh, the turning radius is decreases Our curvature gain reaches infinity means what turning radius zero so what do you mean by turning radius zero for a vehicle the vehicle instead of turning it is spinning about a vertical axis so it's spinning out of the control about a vertical axis so when you go in a uh, cornering with the uh, speed and that speed happens to be a critical speed of your vehicle and that is uh, going to be uh, of unstable state that we said that means what that uh, uh, curvature gain for the given steering input reaches infinity and uh, uh, at that time turning radius zero that means physically the vehicle would spin about a vertical axis right so this is uh, what is that you understand so as 1 by r tends to infinity r tends to zero means vehicle vehicle spins out of control spins out of control right so these are all uh, the importance of uh, steady state gain so if we have these formulas of steady state gain and you would be able to compare uh, the handling uh, characteristic for different vehicles so in the next class let us look at what are different vehicle handling test and uh, if you do not have any doubts i would uh, stop at this point of time right any doubts anybody ethan ethan sir ethan danish joseph yeah do you have followed what i have taught today so i will try to change that see suddenly no my uh, style cannot suddenly change it i was conscious uh, taken uh, your point well 
I will try to you know, write it uh, slowly uh, as per the phase of my uh, speaking. I understand. So actually, that. actually, mm. That's not that's the not problem, the really. Problem it's really because, because for some reason, some Teams has this thing where, where there's a delay. There's a delay. Uh, uh, yeah, there is uh, actually no, the network delay always there. Uh, I, I don't know. I had uh, watched it uh, you know, back also sometime. When I say sometimes no equations, uh, there is blank in the screen. Suddenly, all equation will come. I know that. So, uh, what to do? Uh, uh, we require very sophisticated system for that. So the and it was also very much comfortable to write on a board. But however, for almost two semester now, I am using my stylus pad pen, and that sometimes slips. My hands sweating, and then it slips. You no, know, I am finding it. Yes, sir. Uh, I have to look at screen. I have to. I should not look at my uh, um, uh, pad. So there is some. But uh, I am quite conversant now with that. But however, my handwriting. You no, know, I should improve on the digital uh, uh, pad writing. And I have to go with very slowly. Uh, that's so, what I understand. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the pace is perfect. Like I feel the pace at which you're teaching is good. It's just that uh, because there is a lag, sometimes if we um, lose track of what you're talking about, then it's hard to understand what is written. That's the only problem. Otherwise, the pace is fine, sir. Yeah, what is happening? No, I do not know what is happening on the other end. See, when I speak yes, and when I write, no, it is uh, appropriate because I am doing at uh, one place. But you are uh, sitting in different place. Sometimes, no, your audio signal and video signal that uh, there is a face mismatch. So yes, that sir. is always there in any electronic system. Or for that matter, if you take a vehicle uh, uh, study, you would always have this phase difference of excitation at the front axle and the rear axle. Very very important concept. For ride phenomena is concerned, right? So you see that uh, excitation at one wheel. Uh, and excitation the other wheel we most of the time we study excitation to the vehicle as simultaneously happening but it is not so there is a phase delay and that was exploited nicely in order to improve the comfort of that in pitch and bounce model we will see that so this uh, uh, my magnitude that's what is in control system now frequency response function that we say the pace at which i am delivering uh, that is the magnitude but in the face uh, you receive, uh, no, it would be different. So I have two things. One is my speech, another one is my writing on the board. So they uh, have the face, uh, equal faces. Uh, here I am having it. At your end, it may not be. That's why you find it sometimes. Yes, uh, please, uh, no, no, accept it. Uh, let me also take care and very slowly I'll write it. Right? Okay, see, I, I thought of teaching you a lot today, but uh, somehow I do not know. You asked in between some doubts, no? Some, some, suddenly I got uh, blank my mind. I had to get back to the track and do all those things happen today. Uh, that's fine. Uh, that's all the part of uh, teaching learning process. Uh, anyhow, uh, uh, next class we'll have some interesting uh, things to learn. Uh, see, how about uh, taking some extra classes? Because I have a lot of questions to cover up and one week only is there before CAT. So next week, can I have some extra classes also? For example, where Monday we will have, again Wednesday we will have two lectures and Friday also I will take. So it would be five hours meeting in next week. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Yeah. So with that note, let me stop and we will have five more uh, lectures before your CAT and that would complete comfortably uh, sufficient portion for your CAT, right? Uh, your CAT examination you have from breaking performance onwards, whatever that I have been teaching you after CAT 1 uh, till next week Friday. Uh, so we have Monday two periods, we have one period on uh, um, uh, two periods on Wednesday, again Friday one period. And this Wednesday also happens to be holiday. So is it fine that if I take on a holiday? Uh, we'll, we'll decide on Monday. So you please uh, discuss among yourself if you could say that I can teach maximum on Wednesday. So it's a holiday. I would take the class and uh, we can uh, know. Um, so one thing is uh, don't worry about examination. It will be uh, not that tough, but uh, you have a lot of things to understand and learn and that would definitely help you when you are doing this assignment. If you are sincerely doing this digital assignment for the vehicle, uh, trying to understand it is not easy that you get everything from a lecture you get confused also sometimes then you go back and look at the textbook 
still you do not understand please call me back or post your doubts in the video that uh, uh, whatever that you don't understand this is the topic that we are teaching i don't follow if you put in the videos as a comment i would definitely uh, reply on that right so don't worry keep learning in case you do not get don't hesitate to ask me any number of times i would be happily explaining that so with that note let me stop recording